Hello, it's Mrs. Kelly, your school counselor at Geist. It's so great to see you again. I know this week we've talked about stress and we've talked about what is stress. Stress are big emotions that we might be feeling. And normally we feel stress in our minds where we have so much going on or we feel it in our bodies where we're tense or irritable and we're kind of moody. So let's talk about what we do to calm ourselves back to the green zone when we're dealing with stress. Let's look at our mindful activity here. If we look at our brains during stress, notice over here on the left side, our brains can look very much like clutter. Lots and lots of thoughts and feelings going on in our brains. And it's very hard to think. And what we're trying to do is get back in this calming zone where we're very, very focused and we're able to problem solve and we're able to think. So let's talk about some of those things we can do to calm ourselves back to that green and calm zone. If we look at what our brains do when it's stressed, we have three very, we have a lot of parts of our brain, but three parts of our brain I want to focus on for stress. The very front part, and we'll look at our brain model, our brain model looks like this. The very front part is our prefrontal cortex. And our prefrontal cortex is that thinking and problem solving area in the front of our brains. That's where we do our best thinking and our best problem solving. And right inside, if you'll look right here, is what we call the amygdala. And that is stationed right inside our brains and we'll use our thumb to show that it's nice and tucked away inside our brains and that's where our emotions are centered. That's when we're noticing strong emotions. Right now my amygdala is very calm because it's in its calm place and lying and resting. But what happens when I have a big emotion? A big emotion can trigger my prefrontal cortex to go offline and then it's not working. So when my emotions are in control, I'm not thinking very well because my prefrontal cortex or problem area of my brain isn't working very well. So I have to stop, notice my feelings, and calm down, use my strategies to calm down my amygdala, put it back in place so that my prefrontal cortex is back online and I'm ready to think. The last part of the brain that I wanted to focus on is the memory bank. It's tucked away in the back of your brain, and that's called the hippocampus. And that's where you store anything that you've learned from your prefrontal cortex. It makes a pathway to that hippocampus. But when our amygdala is in control, that pathway isn't working very well. So we've got to learn that our amygdala is a really important part of our brain because it can set our thinker off. And we need to really calm it back down so that we can use our prefrontal cortex. Let's watch this video because they're being mindful and calming themselves down. And this is a great way. First thing to notice is you're going to stop and breathe. And then you're going to do a mindful activity. And use self-talk. I get breathe. really mad when my brother hits me a lot. I don't like it when you say you don't want to play with me. When I'm mad, my brain can get a headache, and it can start hurting. Your blood keeps pumping because you're, like, really mad. And you start to get sweaty because you're getting really, really mad. And then when you start getting really mad, you turn red. When your body can't really control yourself, mad just takes over your body. I just get out of control. <laughs> It's kind of like if you had a jar and then the jar would be your brain and then you put glitter in the jar and that would be how you would feel. Like. If you shook up the jar and the glitter went everywhere, that would be how your mind looks. And it's like spinning around and then you don't have any time to think. And you sometimes punch stuff and people when you don't really mean it. When I get angry, I feel it in my heart. I really don't like when I get angry. The amygdala really reacts, but the prefrontal cortex 
tries to keep it down when I like feel like I want to, you know, get really angry and yell. I just like sometimes, you know, like take deep breath. Like first you find a place where you can be alone. Then you find some way to relax and calm down. When I need to calm down, I take deep breaths. I breathe in through my nose. Sometimes I close my eyes or just take deep breaths. It's like it's coming down, it's like not like moving. It's like slowing down and then it stops. And the heart plumps slow and then it goes into your brain. It's like all the sparkles are at the bottom of your brain. My brain like slows down and then like I feel more calm and then I'm like ready to speak to that, that person. feel so much better already. Have you noticed how much better you feel just after you've breathed? When the amygdala was all upset, we took a breath and took some more breaths and our minds went right back to that calming, that calming space that we like so much that feels so good. Let's look at how to calm the feelings. We just saw that in the video. And remember when we teach our second steps lessons, we've learned that we stop. What is our signal? Ooh, I'm noticing that my body is really tense. I'm noticing that I'm feeling angry or my thoughts are racing. And then I want to name my feeling. Ooh, I think I might be kind of mad or ooh, I might be kind of overwhelmed. Whatever that feeling is, stop and name it. And then we start with the calm down. Because notice over here on the right hand side, you're noticing that this little guy Oh, he looks like he's getting really angry. So he's noticing in his body that his feelings are really, really irritated and he's really angry. And now he starts to breathe and use self-talk. Self-talk is so important. We say to ourselves, it's okay. I know what to do. I've got this. And you noticed in the, the video, their minds, all that glitter settled in their mind all those feelings and those emotions and those thoughts and now we're able to make a mindful choice and our mindful choice comes from our prefrontal cortex and we can make a great choice now that we're calmed down we can choose to go walk away we can choose to take some more time out we can choose to use an iMessage whatever it is that we feel like would be a great choice we're going to use that now remember, our prefrontal cortex is calm now, and now we're going to make that mindful choice with our prefrontal cortex. Now we could choose a lot of different options. It could be an iMessage. It could be give yourself alone time, maybe to problem solve. What do I need to do to fix this? It could be to make a compromise. Well, maybe you can do this first, and then I can do it, and then we can switch. That's a great compromise. Self-talk is so important. I'm okay. I've got this. It's okay. I'll be fine. Or distract yourself and maybe go do something else. Remember, we're going to be using iMessages because there's a great way of problem solving. You say how you feel. That's why it's so important to know your emotions. I feel, whatever that emotion is, upset. I feel angry. I feel irritated when you keep interrupting me. What did they do that made you upset? When you take my toy. When you won't listen to me. And then you ask for a fix. What could solve that problem for you? 
Will you please stop interrupting me? Will you please share the toy? Will you please take turns? Whatever it is that is the problem, you ask for a healthy solution. So now we're going to build our toolboxes because each of us has very specific things that help calm us. For me, when I'm in the blue zone, that's when I'm feeling a little bit sad and I'm a little bit sluggish and I'm a little bit feeling down. So in the blue zone, I might choose things like energizing. I might go for a walk and do some exercise. I might do some stretches. I might jump, do some jumping jacks or a mindful activity that gets my brain, mind going to wake me up for the day. In the green zone, I'm doing pretty well. So I'm doing fine, and my amygdala is nice and calm. So in the green zone, I'm probably going to keep doing what I want to do because it's working for me. Well, when I'm in the yellow zone or the red zone, those are signals that something's a little not right with me, and I'm starting to get out of control. So in those, I might choose to always notice first because we stop, notice our feel, name our feelings, and then we calm ourselves down. I always use self-talk. Self-talk is things like, I'm okay. I've got this. I know what to do. Always start with self-talk because that helps calm those emotions real fast. And then the next one is always to start breathing. Those are my two favorite and we use those in school because they're really easy to do and they're very something you have control over doing at any moment in any, any space that you're in in the school. But then there's other toolboxes and you can talk about those things like playing with a toy, doing some stretches, um, walking, taking a walk, quick walk to get us some water, going and sitting in the bean bag or using a calming area with some fidgets. You start naming what some of those toolboxes are for you and you will be all set to be ready to go and know what to do when you're in those zones of blue, yellow, or red and you want to get back to this calming place. Remember, mindfulness is noticing that you're upset and then we're going to notice that our amygdalas are way in control and we have a strong emotion and we need to stop, name the feelings, start breathing, self-talk and calm ourselves down to where we're thinking straight. Have a wonderful day and keep practicing with your teachers and with your, your other students in your class and try to come up with some toolboxes for your class. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.